Welcome to Wales, everyone. We are going to go retro game hunting at the Kex in Cumbran. We're going to see some fantastic portable systems, two $70 Atari Jaguar games, and a complete in-box N64 game. And what it is, you will have to watch the video to find out. I'm your man out of Japan at J Contra, and let's get going a lots of portable systems here we've got a bunch of vitas over here going from about let's say 120 to 130 dollars i think last i checked the it's one pound to a dollar 30 so please excuse the j contra math here interesting over there on the right is the psp go which is the digital only version of the psp i can't believe they're even selling this it's Kind of strange, though. The PSP Go has actually become somewhat of a collector's item because it didn't really take off in the mid to late 2000s. And you still... I don't even know how you would get games on the system. I think right now, you still have to use, like, your PS3 to get your games on a PSP. You can't even use the PS4. Here we've got a bunch of Nintendo DSs. And we've got a DS Lite, DS Lite, DS Lite. They are going for about 60 bucks, which, you know, I wonder what's going to happen to the DS. We've got that special edition, ooh, the new 2DS XL console. That is going for about 160 bucks. That's a lot, but it's got nice little rosy Pikachu cheeks. A bunch of 3DSs really have held their value, surprisingly, even though they've really been phased out at this point. We've also got a PlayStation 2 DualShock pad going for 25 bucks, And then on the right, we have the Slim, also known as the Slimline Black Console, going for about 65 bucks. PS2, still very cheap, very collectible. Got tons of games pretty much everywhere. We've got the Dreamcast VMU there going for just 13 bucks. That's pretty good. I mean, Japan probably buy it for like eight or nine bucks so not that huge of a markup and remember british prices also are inclusive of tax we also gotta keep that in our minds and then right underneath it is an nes classic this is the pal version i don't know if they kept the games at 50 frames per second for the pal uh nes or not i'm not sure someone in the comments is gonna have to correct me on that and then a, an official snes controller beautiful famicom bu buttons there they've got the blue green red and yellow that's going for uh let's say 18 bucks and that's i mean outside of japan yeah that's probably going to be good although in japan you can find these in the junk section for like five dollars they're not that hard to find and then is that an original oh that is an original nes controller wow and that's just going for why is the nes controller like five pounds why is it a third of the price Ooh, and then we got this nice, what is it? It's like the Glacier, Glacier Blue. I actually still have my original Glacier, uh, the beautiful translucent kind of purpley blue plastic. Wish they would bring this plastic back. I would pay big money for translucent switch, uh, for a translucent switch, much like this Game Boy Advance. It is going for about let's say, just under 60 bucks. Let's say like 55 uh, for that Game Boy Advance. Looking at the screen, it looks like it might be a little bit scratched up, but I can't really tell uh, with this light setup. And then ActRaiser over there on the right going for a cool $40. I mean, ActRaiser is fine. You can buy it complete in box in Japan for $20. But ActRaiser is like, it's like two good games in it. It's like platforming and uh, sort of like God Civilization Builder Simulator. We've got a PS2, the value PS2 HDMI converter. I know there's the, like, what is it, Belkin? There's a couple of different cords that you could pick up for the PS2 that are, like, 40 or 50 bucks. Here, this is going for less than $20. On the left, we've got Pokemon Ruby without its box going for, 30, for over $30. Out of the box, I, I don't think that's terrible i know in japan i mean you, they've got these everywhere you can buy them for like 15 dollars. but then again they're also not in english whereas so in pal most of the frame rates for consoles are going to be 50 frames per second however all of the portal stuff is cross compatible regardless of where you are so you could pick this up and you could put it into your american or your japanese game boy advance and it'll play perfectly fine then over there on the right we've got leaf green again lovely translucent plastic that's all that's going for even more that's going for an extra 13 dollars meaning that it is clocking in at about 50 bucks 
a bit under 50, I would say. And then red. How? Why is Pokemon red cheaper than leaf green? I figured more people would want red, but then again, leaf green probably had a lower print run because in the Game Boy Advance era, Pokemon wasn't that terribly popular. So I don't know what's going on there. You've got the official controller pack over there going for, oh my God, like more than $20. That's a lot for a controller pack, considering that in Japan you can buy them for like three bucks. They're exquisitely cheap. The only problem with N64 controller packs is that I believe they're running off of a of a, like a watch battery inside. So a lot of these things you are going to have to switch out the battery to get it to work. But as long as you've got like your game bit screwdriver, you can you can get it you can switch it out pretty easily. Uh, you well, I mean you also need to desolder it most likely. But aside from that, it's not terribly complicated. There we've got the AGS. This is the 001 that means it's got that sort of basic backlighting i have no problems playing the ags uh, 001 i know the 101 is much sought after but it's also that much more expensive this is going for about 70 bucks that's a lot for a game boy advance sp even in japan they don't get this expensive and they've actually hiked up in price but uh, i mean hey that's it's going to be one of the best ways that you're going to play uh the game boy advance oh and actually we've got two we've got two completed box n64 games you can see the one on the bottom right but on the left we've got pokemon stadium and it includes the transfer pack and it's going for nearly 50 bucks and then here are just the strangers we got off the road for the nintendo here going for 15 pounds and then the strangest items that i have seen so far in my adventures to kex or sex as they call it in the commercials these are jaguar games going for 70 pounds or sorry, $70, and they're actually both American. You can tell because it has the kids to adults ESRB rating. This They do not use that in Europe as far as I know. And so these are American games. We've got Zool 2 there on the right, and then Defender 2000 there on the left, although that Defender is not in its box. Jaguar, very strange system. They've actually, I've seen Jaguars or no, what am I thinking? Not the Jaguar, the other, the portable one. Was that the Jaguar? I thought the Jaguar was the console. Yeah, the Jaguar was the console. What am I thinking? The Lynx? I've seen that in Japan before. Here we've got a, a no, not a complete, but it's a discounted N64 that is selling for uh, 80 bucks. I, 80 bucks for an N64. Man, you can buy them like complete in Japan for like 40. That's unfortunate. Then we've got both the NES Classic, Really decent condition on this box, especially compared to the one we just saw before. And it's going for $80 as well. And then on the right, we've got at a cool $120, the Super Nintendo Classic Mini, the PAL version, with the life-size uh, original controllers. Here we've got a Dreamcast game, Sword of the Berserk Guts' Rage. Man, wasn't, wasn't the late 90s and early 2000s a crazy time for for video game names that's going for about 35 36 dollars and then the x files on the right idos by the way weren't they a british studio so maybe it's a local game then we got x files on the right going for 14 dollars i wonder if david duchovny and jillian anderson actually did those games uh actually did the voices then we've got no mercy here going for <laughs> we've got that going for about what about like 35 bucks was was is pro wrestling big in the UK? I wasn't aware. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. And then I'm. I'm tilting my head, trying trying to read that that screen. Arrow the acrobat. Yes, that is going for twenty six dollars. And then twenty six dollars also for that N sixty four controller. That's not terrible. The stick kind of looks a little bit loose just from just from looking at it. I'm sure it plays perfectly fine. I'm hoping they tested out these these controllers before they're selling them to you. And then interesting, Shining Force 2 for $40. That's I didn't think Mega Drive games got that high because they had such high print runs in the UK, but maybe people really want Shining Force 2. I don't know. I don't know. And then another Dreamcast game there on the left that is Toy Story 2 going for $14 and Medieval going for $26. I, I recognize that cover art. I recognize the character, but I'm not familiar with the game itself. And then SOCOM, Na SOCOM 3 US Navy SEALs. That is going for, that is a huge box and that's real cheap. That's going for like 10 bucks. I have the only time I've ever played SOCOM is when I was like, I was 
babysitting um someone's kids and they had a playstation 2 and the only game they had was socom so that's how i ended up playing socom that's my only experience with it the big deal with socom back in the day was that you could it came with a microphone that you plugged into the console somehow i think through the other controller port and you could actually issue orders to your ai teammates in the single player and it didn't even work half the time but just the idea of being able to do that was was like crazy it's like whole new technology at that point then we've got two playstation minis going for 65 dollars a piece it was a, tra a tragic mistake hate to see him hate, hate to see sony make it but then we've got a lot of consoles which we'll get to in a second uh, but we've got pac-man for the nintendo going for above 30 dollars, and then golden axe going for we'll call that 20 bucks and then medieval 2 for the PlayStation, going for $26. And then we've got two consoles here on the right. We've got a discounted Sega Saturn, a beautiful black Saturn. I really wish they had Japanese Saturns in black. Tragically, they do not. This is going for, wow, just like over $100 for that Sega Saturn. I can't believe how expensive the Saturn has got outside of Japan. And then on the left, I think, honestly, you would be much better off buying this original PS1. This is the PS1 Slim. I don't think it's technically called the Swim, but I'm, I'm calling it the Slim. That is going for about $60. I think you could buy that. You could buy some of the games here. Yes, it's going to be more expensive than the PlayStation Mini, but I think you're going to get a lot more. And especially because PlayStation games in the UK, as far as I've seen, they're not terribly expensive from just my sort of... Uh, my bare knowledge of the field this is you know so this is actually yeah this is the end of it i didn't think like they've this is don't get me wrong they've got a lot of stuff here uh the other thing about kexes is that when you actually uh, go to the shops they have these big showcases where they're put in the consoles and the games that are kind of worth something and they'll also have a big area where it's going to be PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Wii games. It's going to really depend on where you go. This Combran location didn't have as much as I thought it would have had, considering it was in kind of a, a fairly big shopping mall. Whereas when you go to other places, it can be really surprising when you go to some of the more smaller location of Kex's. They'll have a lot of stuff. And while I didn't go into the GameCube stuff here, you can at least find a respectable GameCube selection at most of the Kex's that I visited. So that is it. That is actually, um, weren't able to see a whole lot here. There's, their selection is, I'm actually also really surprised at the rate of turnover at some of these places. You know, you go to, you go to one of these places one month, they'll have what you see before you, you go the next month, they'll have a completely different set of stuff in the showcase. So people are buying the, these games and there is some turnover. And I have to wonder for, for this old stuff, particularly if they don't have a lot of stuff in storage that they then bring out once they can actually make space in the showcase. But they, the games have to move before they can bring out that stuff because it doesn't seem like they're willing to have shelves full of Sega Saturn or PS1 or Mega Drive games, even though Mega Drive was, was pretty fairly common uh, in the UK. So that's been the Kex in Cambran. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love learning about the UK retro game collecting scene. If you would like to see exclusive patron-only game hunting videos in Japan and support the channel, you can head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash jcontra. Thanks for watching and a big mahalo to all my Patreon supporters.